All right, we are live at five. Welcome everyone. We are so excited to welcome you to Pure Dog Talks live podcast at five o'clock Pacific, the first Tuesday of every month. I am your host, Laura Reeves. And while everybody's hopping on, I've got a couple items per usual for the good of the order. In case you haven't heard, we recently launched a new, very, very cool opportunity to access the archives. All right. I've got, I'm coming up on episode 600, y'all. There, there's so much material that a lot of folks don't even know is there and don't know how to find. So I've done all the searching and the hunting and the pecking for you, right? For the very low introductory price of only a buck ninety nine, you can download an entire album of podcasts on topics like breeding and whelping, the hands on part. Um, there's a Pure Dog Talk University on dog breeding. There's every single one of our veterinary voice episodes. There are uh, albums that focus on owner handlers. Uh, we're doing a Love the Breed series coming up and, and people keep requesting episodes on breeds that we've already done. So you can download the Love the Breeds album and get all of the podcasts that we've done specifically about individual breeds. So that's very exciting. Don't forget, always, always, always sign up, join our exclusive patrons group. You have an added perk of the Pure Pep Talk, which is a weekly text message that's a upbeat, fun, educational little thing, usually dipping into the archives on that. And you can sign up for the patrons group, which includes the Pep Talk messages, for as little as $10 a month. I mean, there's a lot of people out there charging a whole lot more for a whole lot less. That's all I'm saying. So if you haven't submitted your request for a Pure Dog Talk patrons badge, shoot us an email with a request for that at team at puredogtalk.com. If you're going to join the patrons, you can go to puredogtalk.com backslash patron. So everything you need is actually on the website. I know that's kind of hard to imagine, but there it is. Anyway, always remember more support gets you more access to more knowledge. And so there's that. Um, in addition to just the coolness of being a patron, uh, joining our patrons community, the after dark events that we have on the patrons Facebook group, we have three patrons retreat retreats scheduled for this year. We just had one in Tacoma Kennel Club. Our next one will be in conjunction with the fabulous International Kennel Club shows in Chicago. That retreat will kick off on August 23rd. And we'll have an after dark on Wednesday night at the hotel bar, uh, the host hotel. We'll do a skills boost Thursday morning. So anybody that needs some hands-on one-on-one drop by, there's no charge for any of this. This is just you guys coming together, joining in our community. Thursday afternoon, we're going to have a presentation from our guest on last month's live podcast, Katie Campbell, talking about her amazing journey to Africa to acquire Basenjis from their native land, working in conjunction with the Basenji Club of America. So bottom line right here, your passion, that's our purpose. So check it all out on the website, puredogtalk.com. And for our special guest this evening, this is such a cool collaboration. We're going to talk about pet insurance tonight, you guys. And I know everybody, this is a hot topic. It's gotten to be almost as hot as dog food. So we're going to try and keep it the spicy on the, on the DL tonight, right? We have, we've got a couple amazing Trupanion reps with us. Joe Victor and Chelsea Shaw are going to talk to us about why pet insurance matters in today's society, specifically what insurance can do for you and your pet why Trupanion offers a different perspective than some of the other companies. And they're going to answer all of your questions, except, right? So there's always that one thing. First off, drop your questions in the chat. Secondly, friendly reminder, we're not going to be able to discuss your specific claim situations. That's not what this is for. 
All right. So just don't even try. It isn't going to happen. Direct those to your breeder relationship manager. They will help you. They're really, really, really great people. We can talk hypothetical hypotheticals and we can answer your questions, but we're not going to get into why Poopsie's claim didn't get covered. So welcome ladies. So, so, so excited to have you guys here. How are you doing tonight? We're great. I'm Good, excited. Thank you for having I, I us, love Laura. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're going to do this one at a time. <laughs> Chelsea, how are you doing tonight? <laughs> I'm so excited to be here, Laura. <laughs> thank you for having us. <laughs> awesome. Joe, how are you doing tonight? I'm ecstatic. I love hanging with you, Laura. I love pup talk. I'm excited to be here. Let's get, let's get let's the ball rolling. <laughs> let's do it. Okay. For listeners, just so you know, the three of us are having a little bit of overlap. So we're going to, we're going to, there might be a little bit of a, a lag while I direct to each other. So we don't just talk over the top of each other. So everybody be cool. It'll be great. So I'm going to, I'm going to have Chelsea start, Joe, I promise I'm going to get to you. <laughs> Chelsea, starting with you, talk to us a little bit about the, the, the 10 years that Trupanion has offered the breeder support program and what kind of impact that has offered for the breeders that you're working with. Oh my gosh. I am so happy to talk about that because you have touched on a huge thing that we are celebrating a huge milestone for ourselves, which is our 10 year anniversary. Over those 10 years, we have been able to really develop this program in support of our breeders and using our breeders' voices. Everything that kind of exists today is founded from all of you. The reason that this program was even designed in the first place was to be in support of our breeders. Ultimately, at the end of the day, we are all interested in protecting pets, but when we kind of think about what centers us all, it's this community. And so when I think about what drew me even to this program, it was very much rooted in the people who, quite frankly, we don't have access to these beautiful breeds without. So this program, of course, is, you know, when we talk about the breeder support program, it is very much centered around the go home day offer and how to protect these pets that you have so lovingly raised, but it's also designed to be in support of you, the breeder, which is, you know, really protecting that transition as they, as your beautiful pets are moving from your expert and tender loving care to their owner's new home. And so over the last uh, 10 years, we have seen a lot of, <laughs> of, of pets protected. We are now at 1.9 million claims paid per month. It is a wild, wild amount. Um, and that is because wait, 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 wait. of, yeah. Per month? Per month. Per month. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know. So we see those claims. And what I love that we'll talk about today, too, is that we're, you know, we're, we're talking about kind of the instant, what this program does, how we're introducing, but then what it means for long term for your buyers, um, for you guys. And so, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's big, big numbers. <laughs> that is amazing, Chelsea. I love that. And so what I want I want Joe to talk a little bit about, because I think having conversation with you, Joe, I want you to share your knowledge about how the, the veterinary industry has changed, right? Just in the last, maybe even five years and, and, and the expenses, and we can do so much more, but it costs so much more. So talk to us a little bit about that, Joe. Well, I think also it kind of comes in hand with the, the past five years of pandemic did also happen. So there was a big boom there. The veterinarians were affected by it. They, you know, cost of care was going up. There was more dogs. It was just, you know, that's something I could ramble on for a while. But in general, one thing I love about True Panion specifically is we care about the veterinarian community. We can pay vets directly. As someone who, you know, had a dog with both ACL tears in my young 20s, I understand the importance of, you know, avoiding the reimbursement model of having the, the vet get paid directly and that something like that is just very streamlined and, and near and dear to my heart so at Trapani we put the vets first we put we put the breeders first we're just we're all very passionate over here right right 
So Chelsea, speaking of passionate, I'm just saying, girl. <laughs> I met you, where was it? Seattle Kennel Club? I love that. So one of the things that we wanted to do today is do a little bit of myth busting, right? So that people could understand more about just pet insurance in general. So talk to us about the concept of pet insurance, even separate from Trupanion, just the concept of pet insurance and why it seems out of line. We have to think about, we live 80, 90 years, our dogs live 10 or 12. And so actuarial tables are a thing, right? <laughs> so talk to us a little bit about that and some of the diff different models about how people actually use pet insurance, how different companies apply that actuarial model. Oh, this is the stuff that I am so nerdy about. I love it, <laughs> Laura. You're absolutely right. <laughs> I, uh, so a, a couple of different things there. So the first thing, and you know, this is kind of a slogan for Trupanion, but it definitely is kind of what insurance, in my opinion, also should be, is that we are here to budget for the unexpected, that there are some things with pets that we can absolutely count on, right? Like as responsible pet owners, I know that when I get a pet, I can expect to take them to the vet. I can expect to, you know, make the decision decision on whether I want to spay and nurture. I can, I, I know those, those kinds of costs. I need to feed them, all of those things. What I don't have is the crystal ball for the rest. I don't know if I'm going to have a lucky, an unlucky, or an average pet. And so where insurance comes in is just that, giving, giving us that, that protection over everything that there is a question mark for. We talked earlier today about, you know, just the laundry list of things that can go sideways, right? We've all talked with buyers on go home day and just we're prattling off all the things. And then you look in their eyes and you see like, oh my gosh, I'm going to traumatize them. Can you still hear me? Oh, there I am. <laughs> and so she just weird. And so that is really, you know, that that's what insurance insurance should be there for is that we don't we can have that peace of mind that we can walk through the world with our pets by our sides and not have to be literally in a fetal position talking about <laughs> thinking about everything that could go sideways. Now, when you talk about in terms of an actuary team and how Trupanion uses it or uh, we we use it specific to our pricing model, we are looking at what it means all over the country for vet care and your community. Just like Joe was touching on, um, we've got all sorts of factors in terms of, you know, pandemic pricing. We have lean staff. We have all these different things. And we have vets that are investing into um, into technology. We want to go to, to our vets that have the most, the best medicine available to us. And right. insurance also allows for that. Um, specifically, Trupanion and the way that we are set up, we do not discriminate against what a doctor wants to do, what a veterinarian wants to do, or what a, or what an owner wants to do if it's vet recommended. And so that's what's so great about, you know, being able to know what does the cost of care look like in my area and that I am paying appropriately to receive the care that when I need it um, and how I need it. So that's kind of how insurance is kind of set up in general, but with the actuary team. I oh, think... Chelsea, and, and maybe Joe, you can touch on this too. I think it is really, really critical for people to understand. We were talking about this a little bit earlier today. Everybody says, well, mine's expensive or mine's not expensive. or duh, duh, duh. You have regulation that differs in all 50 states. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, and, and it's funny, actually, when we were talking about that earlier, uh, I think it, we'll talk about myth busting or a common question that comes up a lot is why don't we do like group discounts, like multi-dog discounts? And a lot of times that's also a, a, a challenge that we're looking at. Not only are we kind of thinking about that total pool of risk that we're looking at, you know, what does cost of care look like? But then in each state, we also have an insurance commissioner. This is the very unsexy side of insurance, by the way, all the jargon and <laughs> There's nothing sexy oh, about oh, insurance, oh, girls. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> but that's that's the thing that we we have a, a legal team that is constantly looking at at, okay, what is what is allowed, what isn't allowed in each state. And so those are things that, you know, when we are pricing for each individual member, it's looking at that total holistic piece, 
puzzle piece, right? All of the pieces of the pie together. And so that's a, a, a big component of that kind of either, you know, why aren't there group discounts or is there, is there one available? Well, maybe Tennessee allow, would allow something, but not California. And so when you're looking at that all that big group, how do we make, how, how, how do we price appropriately? And that's what those actuary teams um, are designed for. Wow. Okay. So Joe, it's your turn. And, and I want you to talk to, cause I know I've been with you at dog shows. When you talk to folks at dog shows, what is the most common other than why can't you give me a discount for all 10 of my dogs? What, what is the most common question that you've gotten at the dog show that you would like to speak to a, you know, a wider audience? Oh, uh, that's a good one. You kind of hit the main one on the head. It's something that, you know, group discounts and kennel insurance is something that, you know, I talk to a lot of my breeders about. I personally love feedback. I love getting to know my breeders, just kind of asking them in a perfect world, what would happen, you know, and to piggyback to Chelsea's point with commissioners, things are changing all the time. Like maybe something like this could be available one day, you know, and that's kind of where I come in to be your voice. I like to say that I listen and not just hear. I think that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, in terms of questions, I, it really is kind of similar around those, um, you know, also with our breeder pet writer, we do have something like that specifically in mind for breeders, um, for like emergency C-sections, um, something like that. I think that's very uh, unique and special. We do try um, to kind of have something not just a part of the breeder program, but for breeders as well, if they do decide to um, ensure with us. And I think that that's really important, Joe. And I know that, and we talked a little bit about what can we talk about that's upcoming, that's just starting to roll out. And that's one of those items, isn't it? That in certain states, and it goes back to that, you know, the, the uh, commissioners, certain states now, the C-section is included in your policy. With the breeder pet rider, yeah, yeah. Well, Chelsea, Chelsea can speak to this. She's more up to speed oh, on this. One. <laughs> I was gonna say I work with some of those states, so I'm happy to talk about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> some of you may have, and you know, I. I I always say sometimes there's true panion speak and we can speak in shorthand. And so sometimes you'll hear us say 1.0 or our, our, our policy that a lot of us know about. And then there's 2.1. 2.1 has rolled out in a few different states, Texas, uh, Maine, Arizona, all being uh, states that uh, actually have the breeder writer included into the policy. So uh, separate from those states, if you don't live in one of those states, you have the option to add an additional breeder writer. Um, so that is something, again, we, you know, we recognize that these are, there's, you know, additional risk that is associated with breeding. And so that is something that is available to you, which is great. Right. And I love that. Honestly, I love that the company is trying to continue to provide for the client base because we know that dog breeders and preservation dog breeders are not the most populous group. Right. I mean, we get that. And so we appreciate that, that you guys are constantly thinking about the idea of preservation breeders. So we appreciate that a lot. So, all right, next up. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chelsea. You know, I was going to say in, in your kind of question about what is the, one of the most commonly asked questions at dog shows or that I get pretty often. And it's, it usually is about like, you know, is there something specific, you know, to breeders or, you know, I, or maybe I don't need that full policy. What does it look like? And that's something that we are constantly looking at too. And we invite your feedback in about what is most meaningful to you as breeders. Because, you know, one of the things that I always say to the breeders that I work with, especially my preservation, uh, breeders is that you guys, you know, you're experts on a totally different level. You are basically veterinarians yourself. You, you have so much knowledge. And so, you know, the, the average pet owner, when we're looking at a comprehensive policy that Trupanion offers, that is really designed for the average pet owner. And so being able to look at that again, what, you know, what is most meaningful to our breeders, we're constantly looking at what we can, what we can do. And you guys are always, I mean, truly for Joe and I in particular, always what we're thinking about. <laughs> right, right, right. And I, and I think that that's, that's kind of the point, right? Isn't it? And, 
you know, another one that I hear <clears throat> myself, and I, I talk to people about Trupanion on a pretty regular basis. I'm associated with the company, obviously, because you sponsor the podcast. Um, people ask me, you know, what's the best pet insurance? I say Trupanion. They're like, no, it's too expensive. I'm like, oh, oh okay. You know, legit. My, my premium for my three-year-old dog that I signed up as an eight-week-old puppy is maybe just a little bit more than your three-year-old dog that you just signed up. Maybe a little bit less. But when my dog is 10, it's still going to have the same premium or pretty close to it. And so talk a little bit, Joe, maybe if you would, the overview of the insurance market that, you know, every Everybody has a different way of doing it. I get it. We choose Trupanion because we like what they do, but there are other methods that, that people can encounter when they're searching for pet insurance. Yeah. I mean, to circle back to enrolling your puppy at eight weeks, first off, one mm -hmm. thing I love about Trupanion as someone who's had a senior dog herself is we don't do birthday pricing. If you enroll your puppy at eight weeks old, which is the, where the core value of the go home day offer is to, you know, in our system, this puppy is always going to be eight week old, not to say that premiums won't go up with inflation or pool of risk, but you're enrolling. And then also with the wave waiting periods, the immediate coverage, the chances of a pre-existing conditions, like allergies, even something like that, like completely out of your hands. Like it's, you know, it, it will be covered for life. You know, that that's our main, our main goal and to be covered for life, which is another reason why we don't do birthday pricing as someone also had a senior dog. I it just went up and up as I needed it most, you know? Um, so I can't speak too much to how other companies do it, but they have, from what I've seen myself, my own research, they have lower premiums mm -hmm. and then that will change pretty quickly. So, mm -hmm. You know, but an, uh, another thing and, I personally and, love. Go ahead. Oh, and I was just going to say another thing I personally love genuinely about the go home day offer is that you're per a lot of pet parents in the U.S. especially don't have insurance. I like to think that even if they don't go with True Panion, at least it sparks something in their mind to do their some research and, you know, go with one of the many other companies out there. But, you know, um, True Panion, I think, is great. And I think there's a lot of value in the go home day offer right from the start. Well, and I tell my puppy people, right? Like I sell my puppies. I say, here's your Trupanion paperwork, all the rest of the paperwork. Trupanion is part of the paperwork. And I tell them, you're buying a dog that I've spent thousands of dollars on the health testing for the last 25 years. Like, I know that this is healthy. I'm giving you a guarantee that I will replace yeah. the puppy or refund the money if it's not healthy in these ways, right? So, so I stand behind my dogs, but I can't help it if that dog jumps off the Grand Canyon and breaks its leg, <laughs> right? Like I can't help it if that dog is one of the weird ones in the world that much like people has something go wrong with it. We're not hothouse flowers and yet we all have diabetes and heart disease and bad backs and all the things, right? So dogs are no different. And, and one of the reasons that they, um, Canaan Health Foundation, AKC's Canaan Health Foundation has the One Health Initiative is that dog systems and people systems are so similar that the, they can actually, the research serves in cross purposes. And so there's no reason to think that, you know, randomly dogs are going to get seizures or they're going to get cancer because people do. Um, so I guess that to me is the big piece. If I can, I can't afford to insure my six-year-old dog now. I didn't know about pet insurance when he was born, but I can insure his little cousin, right? At eight weeks old before she leaves the litter and she's my keeper puppy so that I don't have to worry about paying for her bills. And when the old one gets sick, you know, I've got, I've got the funds that I can use to cover him. So Chelsea, if you wanted to carry on on that topic, that would really be fabulous. I would love to because <laughs> this is the 
thing I talk about the most. Um, because here's the deal. At the end of the day, Mother Nature is going to do her thing. We can do everything right. And let's face it, this breeding community does everything right. We are desperately investing. Again, we are spending the money. You guys are, I, I cannot speak um, loudly enough about how much our breeders are investing into healthy puppies. At the end of the day, when they leave you, there is there are so many question marks. In fact, Natalie, can I ask you, would you mind flashing up that top five claims just in 2023? Yeah. So this, I, I was going to say, so if you take a look here, it's a little bit small on my screen, so hopefully you guys can see it a little bit bigger. But um, in just 2023, we have seen uh, some big, big numbers <laughs> coming through, which is why we see so many claims paid out. Uh, on this list alone, our top five was a mini cheater schnauzer. Uh, we've got a Labrador owner. I've got golden retriever, um, a couple more mixed breeds, a Labrador. Um, everything that's listed on here, is there anything in common that you see, ladies? No, I got nothing. No. <laughs> exactly. there, is, there is no rhyme or reason. And I think that that's the thing that, you know, when we're talking about, okay, and, you know, and the other thing that I'll call out is we've got under one, we've got two years, mm -hmm. another under one, two, two, eight years. A age is, you know, you know, we we can uh, expect a certain amount uh, at certain times, right? Uh, right. I think, uh, Laura, you and I were talking earlier about, okay, let's just look at the first 30 days. If we were talking about right. the go-home day, what's the claim we're going to see the most often, right? GI issues, Giardia. Someone's going to get Giardia. Always. We know that's going to happen. We can Always. guarantee it, that, right? So that is something we can pretty much count on. And then there's going to be everything else about, you know, we don't know how tall that bed is or how tall that sofa is, that hole in the back fence. And at all those different ages, there, you know, there's going to be things that they're more susceptible of. The baby, they're, you know, right. you home a baby with four legs and a mouth what could go wrong as they get older right. they get smarter sometimes they get sneakier sometimes <laughs> and that's well, the and, i mean you know the the great thing is hopefully our preservation breeders are telling people to put their puppies in grates but i'm saying you know <laughs> they could eat things they well can Exactly. And you can tell when you, I mean, again, you can say, you can talk until you're blue in the face that, it, you know, we, again, people, people are autonomous, it's being, so they're going to do their own thing. But in saying that, to kind of circle back to that, ensuring and at, at young and healthy is that there's a few things that we can count on in this life. And most likely we are going to see our pets through their entire lifetime. We're going to see maybe three or four oh, major no. conditions that pop up, right? Like that's, that's the hope. Um, and you know, we, we know that these things are going, are going to happen when they're young and healthy before any of their stuff comes up. One, the policy is going to be the, the most affordable it's ever going to be, the cheapest. And so investing when they're young and healthy means that when all of that stuff comes up, you're covered. We want our and insurance the price to work doesn't go it. up just because Correct. they get to be nine, not because they're old and not because you had claims. The price doesn't change exactly. for those things. Exactly. And you know what, uh, Laura, I'm going to use your own quote from earlier, uh, that people are charging a whole lot more for a whole lot less. <laughs> I was like, write that down. Because I, I will say, you know, when I when Joe was talking about even in that 30 days, when what I kind of equate it to is that it's none of us can manufacture time, but 30 days gives us time to do our research and see which insurance company is going to suit our long term, right? You know, what, what helps us in the immediate and then what helps us in the long term. A lot of companies want the freedom to exclude things, um, to change their mind, to say, oh, nope, that's not covered anymore. Or your pet's getting older, which means you're going to start costing us more money. So now we have the freedom to change that pricing. Mm -hmm. Trupanion, and this is the reason why ultimately I went to Trupanion and now I work here, um, is that birthday pricing was not a thing, that I am not penalized for my pet getting older. In fact, I am making an investment when they are young and healthy. And granted, you know, anything can go sideways. I could get an $11,000 claim in the first year. That is absolutely possible. But again, Liver what I know for surgery sure- surgery is no joke. <laughs> it's no joke. And, but again, what I know for sure though, is that, you know, I'm gonna do 
do the best I can do to be a good mama. And it's still, we're, we're going to see some things come up. We know that for sure. But if I invest now, that's what's going to give me, oh, and I have a little timer going up. Um, that's what's going to kind of pay off in the end. Joe, while she's answering her phone, um, can you talk to us a little bit? Um, just walk people who are unfamiliar with the program, walk us through um, what the go home day offer actually involves. I assume most of the people here know this, but let's make sure. Yeah, so I would love to. So the go home day offer, um, once a breeder comes to us and they get signed up, uh, we provide them with a promo code. Um, not to get too into the weeds, but there are two promo codes, as we were talking about with different state regulations. New York uh, has their own special promo code. Um, so if you're a New York California. reader, you can, reach out, you can reach out to me directly. <laughs> um, and once you get set up with a promo code, you can provide that to your new puppy puppy or kitten families. You, we, can, we provide everything digitally right now. So you can email, text, print. I like to tell my buyers to, you know, a pickup day is so exciting. They're going home. There's so much going on. You have all this other paperwork, goodies, things that smell like the mom to go home with. So sending it beforehand because the time window is, is sensitive, 24 hours. And then all they have to do is call Trupanion, provide your breeders promo code. You can ask our licensed expert any specific questions about policies, how to submit claims, anything like that. Um, and then after that, they're covered for at least 30 days, unless you live in New York. But <laughs> but I think it's a great program. There's a lot of value there. <laughs> well, and I think that, you know, once again, we talk about all the different states have all different things. I know California's mm -hmm. thing out here is different. When I've sold puppies to California, they get a different code. I mean, it's a thing. But that's all, I don't know, to me, that's just it's kind of like whatever it's it's just it's insurance right like it's <laughs> yeah. a thing um i personally i think that when i talk to my people and i'm going through their contract right so this is what i do i've got this whole packet like they get a folder for god's sake and it's and sometimes it's a binder it just depends and so you go through the contract and you go through the training stuff and you go through the grooming stuff and then you have the insurance stuff and it's all the you're you're walking them through this new life that they're going to have for 10 to 15 years and so all of these things matter and so i can't force them right to sign up for the insurance permanently but i can encourage them strongly to sign up for it for the 30 days because that way i know in my heart of hearts that that puppy is going to get home and even if it jumps out the car window while I'm driving down the road, like it's covered, right? That's my peace of mind. And so I put a lot of effort into that with the, with the folks that buy my guys. So. Yeah, that that's amazing. One thing I would like to mention too, that I think is more value than the 30 days is the wave waiting periods. So if anything, right. the second they activate and they walk out to your point, if right. they get, you know, God forbid, hit by a car or something happens. The way waiting periods, I think, is one of the most crucial parts to our to our offer. It's it, the chances of a pre existing condition are are non existent. You're setting this dog or puppy or kitten up for success. Right, right, and I think that that is absolutely mission critical. And Chelsea, I saw you had your hand up too, honey. <laughs> So I, well, and again, this is where I get all fired up because I'm like, <laughs> again, one of the things that I always say to my breeders is that the, the thing I know and I trust the most is that my breeders are sending home perfectly healthy puppies. We know that for sure. And I also know something a little bit about the human condition, which is no one wants to take personal responsibility. And so what do they do? A broken leg? Whose, whose door do they knock on? Yours. Uh, puppies throwing up? Whose door do they knock on? Yours. You talk to your blue in the face about, you know, what a change of environment, what change of food can mean. And what, water. or you look on uh, water. First thing you tell them is don't take it, don't set them on the ground. You see on Facebook, they're at Petco. And so it's like all of those things. And again, that's where I say when it was designed to protect our breeders too, is having, is saying, you know, I, again, I can encourage you to go not not only protect yourself, your family, your finances, but it's also in protection of, of me. It's in protection of our breeders to say, okay, I, I can control all of this. I can control up until 
they leave. Um, that's also why it's time sensitive too. I always tell people they got the day before. The oh yeah, freaks and Trupanion is for the control freaks in the world. <laughs> Me being one of such, I'm saying this is an absolute fact. Like I control everything. I control who gets my dog. I control what they eat up until they leave. I control. I can control everything. The minute they walk out the door, I have no more control. And so, right. Yep, exactly. It's all question marks. And so Joe was even mentioning too, with kind of, you know, for anybody who's maybe not in the program yet, but we'll teach you how to uh, to join or show you how to join. Um, when, when offering that, you know, we also stress the timeline of it. It is a time sensitive offer because again, we know, we trust everything in your environment is, is under the control and we can assume risk for about 24 hours. And then everything beyond that is just a big question mark. And so that's why we're, you know, they can, they can activate the day before, the day of, and up to 24 hours after your, their individual pickup time. I usually make them not drive out my driveway without the phone call. That, I, that's what I try for. I can't always get that, you know what I'm saying? But that's that's a goal. That's, that's my personal goal. Um, okay, so we've got some questions for you guys out here popping up on the screen. Heather Butcher. Uh, so I was just talking about this program with breeder friends of the dog show last weekend. Great timing. So Heather, did they have any specific questions that you want to drop in the chat for us? So while Heather's thinking about that, anybody else out there have questions? Natalie, do we have any questions popping in? We had somebody come in earlier that is, um, says her clinic was one of the first to get set up with the vet bank direct deposit. So it's a game changer, 100%. Uh, love that. Yes, Chelsea, go. You know what? This actually reminds me of a question we get all the time, which is, um, can I go to any vet? Does it matter? Does someone have to have uh, the vet direct pay? And the answer is they can go to anyone, anywhere. We pay off of the invoice. Now, we do have that vet direct pay, which uh, um, uh, that they were mentioning, which I, I just I get so excited about. Because again, I started on the hospital side of the business. So I love I love when, you know, a claim would come through in just a few minutes. It was like the most exciting thing. And so <laughs> it, it was, again, I could nerd out about this all day. But ultimately, we want you to go to get to receive care where you're comfortable. And some vets, you know, they don't, they don't want to incorporate a new thing or they just, you know, they're old school. They do everything written paper and pen. That is okay. We will, we, we want you to get, receive the care that you get. So there's no exclusions or exceptions when it comes to uh, where you're going as long, as long as they are certified vet. Well, as long as they're a trained professional, I think that's the important part. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and so I think, you know, one of the things that we were also talking about a little bit earlier today, and Joe, maybe you can speak to this. Some of the um, questions that we encounter or, or concerns that people have or address specific questions, talk to us about just, we started on this a little bit earlier and then we went off on a squirrel. To me, it is a question of how much more veterinarians can do and how much more that care costs. So if you can talk to some of the, I mean, we, we saw the chart about, you know, $11,000 for a liver shunt. Talk about some of what you guys see in terms of claims for just like a spay or a neuter that they said one testicle, you know, any of those kinds of things that come up that are not cheap. Yeah, I mean, we um, we see claims coming in every day. Um, we also have our own animals ourselves, so we can actually live through that firsthand uh, that the cost is going up, you know, unless you move into more of a neural, you know what I'm talking about, area. Rural. Um, but, I yeah, live so in a rural area. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> so was my bedtime over here. Um, but... <laughs> But everybody um, Joe's yeah, on the <laughs> East Coast. It's late there. <laughs> no, but I mean the the cost of vets are going up and the amount of vets are going down. Um, you know, and yeah. one thing that um true true panion, I one thing that 
personally I love about Trupanion is we really do care about the vets and think about them too when they have a sick puppy or kitten and they see the parents trying to make a difficult decision if this is something they can even do you know thousands of dollars like Chelsea and I were talking uh the other day that usually if something's around over around a thousand for a hundred then it's just kind of it's a critical matter you know and having that difficult conversation with the vet in the room um like can we do this can we not can we max out our credit cards things like that and that's you know the vet cost is going up but even the cost of dogs could be going up kittens you know everything's going up right now so you know it's it's good to have something that can protect your fur baby you know in the time that you need it i and i was saying to chelsea we can be the best dog mom or dog or kitten mom around but things happen and it's good to yep. have something that could be there for for you and for your vet yep and i think that joe you really kind of touched on an important part there um, I, Dr. Marty Greer's on the podcast pretty regularly. We talk about veterinarians and how maxed out the vets are, right? Mm -hmm. And and so I know many of my personal friends are veterinarians. And, you know, when an owner has to make a decision to euthanize a dog that the veterinarian knows they can save, but the owner can't afford to save it, that breaks that veterinarian and when they have to do that three or four or five or six or ten times in a day mm -hmm. over the course of a 40 or 50 year career can you even imagine and so i mean if you like your veterinarian even a little bit <laughs> um stop and think about the trauma that they go through right um and and they've got to pay their bills they've got to pay their staff Half the time they're there doing a C-section for us at 11 o'clock at night, which means there's staff there helping, running anesthesia and helping with the puppies and all that. We need to make sure they're getting paid so that they will stay in business. So the next time we have a problem, there's a veterinarian to take care of our pet. And that's just facts. Chelsea, Laura, I know you are the, I was going to say. You are the queen of the mic drop. There is that, and that is the that is the problem we are trying to solve. Um, in fact, you just touched on exactly why Daryl Rawlings, the 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 CEO of our company, the president of our company, the owner of our company, um, he why he why he created. Um, Trupanion. It was to to solve this exact problem. And I think when when we talk about veterinarians and what they are great at, it's medicine. What they are not great at, or maybe they, or better to say, not all of them are great at, or, or you know, to be fair, they weren't maybe even taught in school is is the the financial piece of it. You know, I remember, you know, to make it very personal uh, to my story of of why insurance even became a part of my world is because I I had a boxer named Ruby, and he was wonderful. I went to an incredible breeder. I would go to her again. She was great. Um, he was unlucky. Um, he was diagnosed with allergies when he was really young. By the end of his life, we had spent upwards of $10,000 just on his allergies. That's not his eye stuff. That's not his hip mm -hmm. stuff. That's none of the rest of it. At the end of his life, my vet tech, Samantha, who I still owe all of this to, said, you know, you might want to consider insurance next time. Insurance. And um, I said, what? I lived eight minutes away from Trupanion headquarters. My sister was a vet, vet tech. My cousin is a vet tech. I had never even heard the concept, the word medical insurance for pets before. And when I started to pull the thread on what that would mean specific to our policy and why I ultimately went forward with one, I remembered so clearly this moment when I was looking at Ruby and I was saying to him, I'm so sorry, honey, we're just gonna have to wait like one more week and then I'll move this here and then we can do the thing. And I was like bartering with him and I'm bartering with my vet and they're giving me payment plans and we can look at this test first and this will be 500 and then we can wait to do 600. And no one got into the business of saving pets to talk about six different financial plans. Nobody got into the business of saving pets to ultimately put down or euthanize um, healthy ones. No one, no one wants that. And so, you know, when we talk about how we set our, our, our babies out into the world up for success, 
us, right? And that's what they are. They, they are little pieces of our heart that go out into the world. And when we talk about protecting them, it's it's the community in which they enhance because our pets are our whole world. They are what brightens everything. And so for, you know, to know that, you know, part of that community is also protecting our veterinarians. So a long tangent, a little personal, but I think it's that thing that all all of us have encountered either personally or through a friend and so when I see comments like pop up from Heather I just it's like oh this is so great because it's our collective conversation so well like and I think I think <laughs> too, Kelsey, that's part of you know when we talked about doing this this particular live podcast tonight we had a couple topics the 10 years and the impact and I think the biggest impact is that people like me who are old school are now aware of the concept of pet insurance, right? And they may or may not have Trepanion, but they know that there is such a thing. Like, right. I didn't know there was such a thing. What are you talking about? I had no idea. And so, pet insurance is that new, you know? And I think that people are becoming socialized to the concept. I think that they are seeing the results of not having pet insurance and, and they are seeing, you know, that their dogs could maybe be saved in times past we couldn't and they can't afford it because they don't have those resources so i think that is a, a an impact that we've made in the last few years and i like to think that pure dog talk had a little bit to do with that so there's that absolutely absolutely <laughs> Um, and I think one of the other things that we wanted to talk about was just the sort of concept of myth busting. So some of the myths, and we talked about some of them, right? The price and the, the price going up and blah, 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 blah. So what are some of your guys' other myths that you wanted to speak to? Oh, gosh. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, I, I think, you know, a, a big one is going to be around, you know, I, and I'll just say it here that sometimes that our our, our purebred um, breeders are you know that they're shut out of the conversation or that that you know their dogs are going to be treated in a different way or you know there's breed exclusions. That is probably the biggest one for me. We yeah. offer a policy to all cats and dogs and for me personally but uh, i i am a representative of trupanion is what i can say wholeheartedly is that our breeders are the future of um of of everything you know we look to you for healthy pets we look to you um for educating the the, the population at as a whole um, and I think that that is, is a huge part of it um, with you know with the exception of you know a few policy direct exclusions we there's there's no discrimination when it comes to to breeds there is there is no um, there there's no parameters on there that when we say okay this breed or that breed or we're gonna exclude you all together no uh, we we want all pets protected and so that is really um, a huge kind a, a huge one for us and I think um, our you know our purebred uh, you know breeders your voices are so important and I think that you know when I talk about with my team members or even when I think about you know what's getting me up every day is that I am committed to standing on top of the soapbox and calling out to anybody who will listen to me what, what our breeders go through the sacrifice the blood sweat tears the sleepless nights everything we are so accustomed to just getting a perfect puppy or kitten in our hands and saying, okay, <laughs> off I go into <laughs> to, 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 to that. Somebody else's, yeah, exactly. Exactly. We uh, don't think about everything that went into it. So that's a big part for us. Right. hundred percent. Joe, what are some of your thoughts on that one? I, I agree with everything Chelsea, Chelsea said, <laughs> um, but thinking of brainstorming of a couple other myths um, that I've come across, um, some breeders are under the impression that they have to have their breeding dogs insured in order to be part of the program. That is not the case. Um, we understand, you know, the, we hear you guys loud and clear that kennel assurance and, 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 and 
ensuring all of your breeding dogs is not feasible. Um, you know, so that is not part of the program. We just want to be there for you to add something to provide to your puppies that you sp put so much love and work into. That, that's, that's what we're here for, to protect them for their life. And I think it's really important, and I don't think we've touched on this one yet, and I had to learn this myself for my own dog. Um, I, it's not just for the puppies you sell that go to another home. Like I want to ensure my keeper puppy, right? So my Agatha, you know, was born. So I have my Bing dog that was born before I did uh, True Panion or knew about pet insurance. And Agatha was born after. And those are my two of my dogs. And Agatha is insured. And I had to call somebody and say, so like, how do I insure my own puppy? Like, is that a thing? <laughs> So Joe, maybe you can talk about that a little bit, the process of making sure your own keeper puppy gets insured, not just the ones you send off into somebody else's house. Yeah, no, that's a great question. I'm glad you brought that up. We also have a breeder exam they offer that we can provide. Um, this is something that you can use from your first puppy's first vet check, even at four weeks old. And it's something that the activation, the offer is very similar to the go home day offer that we provide, that the breeders provide to the puppy buyers, but just this one just needs to be activated within 24 hours of a vet check. You can also mm -hmm. enroll your puppy at birth if you want to. I know that breeders don't do that because they need to new, evaluate what they're going to keep. This is a new but... thing, right, Joe? Yeah, it's relatively new. When we were at Westminster, that was what we were actually yes. handing out. Um, so <laughs> very up to speed. And I, the breeders were so excited to get that at Westminster, especially the preservation breeders. But I know that that's not something you typically use, you know, at birth, four weeks. You need to see confirmation come out a little bit, personality, look, things like that. But we do have that. And it's something that I personally talk to a lot of my breeders about because I'm very passionate about that um, as well. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that was a, that's a great question. And it also goes for, um, be, could be equitable guardian homes, I believe as well. Right, Chelsea? <laughs> right. Um, and so I have a question now, and this is a straight up question. We haven't even, we didn't even like test drive this question. So y'all just plant yourselves, right? So uh -oh. I know, right? I know, I know. Throw in your curveball. Ready? Go. All right. So, so if I ensure every puppy in my litter um at birth it's going to cost me a million dollars because i have 12 of them <laughs> but say i do that uh, and then they all get coccidia because they you know they're puppies and there's dirt in the world how does that work and then and then can i transfer that insurance to the new to the new owners talk to me about this Yeah, you don't want me to take it. I yes, that that is such a good question, Laura, and I'm so glad you brought it up because I have talked about this a lot. So yes, you can do that. You can insure from birth. Um, yes, it would cost an arm and a leg if they are insured from birth. Then, if a case of coccidia came up, then uh, they would be covered. Um, there would be no pre-existing condition. They would have been insured from. The reality is that we're most likely not going to do that with all of our litters, right? That's that's that would be outside of you know what is feasible for all of us, and that is what's so great too about that this this offer, the go home day offer, is that it's really putting onus on the new owner. You know, you're saying, okay, you're we're we're having this new responsibility. You are going to activate your offer, and this is now your baby to take care of. And so there's a real kind of passing of the torch that happens with it. It's very symbolic and practical, <laughs> which I love. Uh, something that is, you know, <laughs> practical. Um, but say you did that, you could, and it, it puts more work on the breeder. What it would mean is that there would be then a transfer of ownership. And so at the time of transfer, you would call Trupanion. There would be, you know, you transfer the funds, you do all that. We have a team that is here and available 24 seven to help with transfer of ownership should that happen. Same thing for, I will say just kind of as an aside to, if you have a policy on maybe, you know, wanting for your breeding females, you're going to retire her. Um, she's going to a new family, but you want to, you know, this family is interested in continuing that policy. We can absolutely do transfer of ownership. You will call Trupanier and, you know, you want to make sure that you're in good standing with payment. 
but then you would call Trupanion and we would take care of the paperwork. Why we and then, love, and, that, oh, sorry. and to, sorry, sorry to interrupt. There mm -hmm. may be a change in the policy payment based on where the new person, the new owner lives. Is that, am I correct? about that yes poten potentially yeah and so that's where i would always say too you know when you're talking to any sort of ownership transfer or anything like that um that is when we will have you know we'd have everything right in front of us to look at the dollars and cents when everything passed over and it goes both ways so if you know if there was some reason it went down it would go down as well right go joe no, I was just going to say what Chelsea said. It can go up and it can go down. If it, you know, right. if you lived in New York City and you move to Springfield, New Jersey, it will it will most likely go down. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you know, I feel terrible because I'm always telling people Trupanion and my policy is not bad. I live in Grants Pass, Oregon. Okay, I mean, if you live in the <laughs> Bay, uh, you know, it's not going to be the same because <laughs> it doesn't cost the same to do the same work. Exactly. 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 Yep. exactly. Okay. All right. Well, ladies, thank you so very, very much. I very much appreciate your time. Joe, I appreciate you staying up past your bedtime on the East Coast. <laughs> Laura, um, here I you love go, seeing guys. you, Laura. This is fun. <laughs> I, you know, as long as we can just get to hang out on, on, on the computer, it's cool. Um, anybody out there, here is your important stuff make sure you can shoot that qr code on your on your computer you can call the number um if you've got a litter coming call them talk to them um there's there's lots of information i don't i don't know how there could possibly be a whole lot more than what we covered tonight but <laughs> i'm sure there probably is right chelsea you know what? I can talk about this literally all day, every day, and I do. So there's always something, and that's what I love too. Is you know any little question that you have when you have when you join the program. One thing that I like to call out is that second bullet point, which you get a dedicated relationship manager. We recognize, of yes. course, this is a business for you, but it's so much more than that. This is your home. These are this is your family. These are your babies. So it makes sense to have someone who cares about you, and we. We genuinely do. We care so much about our breeders. We, you know, we are really lucky to make friends all over the country, um, and and get to know you, your dogs, your your cats. It's it's just it's 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 the thing that we love most. And um and I love you know when people try to stump me too because it means that my my knowledge just gets bigger and broader too. So I, I think you did good. I threw you a total curveball. I hadn't prepped you for it. You nailed it. <laughs> And it wasn't like an easy curveball. I mean, this was like a slider <laughs> and, and like a, you know, around the corner kind of slider. I love it. Anyway. I love it. All right. I really appreciate you guys and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Thank yes. you, Laura. <laughs> Thanks, yes. you guys. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. If you have any questions, you can also... Go to puredogtalk.com and click the link on the partners page so that they know that you came there from Pure Dog Talk. Y'all have a great night now. <laughs>